Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. In today's show, we're chatting with two young filmmakers from the Marianas about their latest films. Later on, I'll be chatting with Tony Young. And at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce the young man who wrote, directed, and starred in a film called Steps on the Shore, which just won Best Made in the Marianas at the 2022 Guam International Film Festival. Joshua Pahari Liaga. Hello, thank you for having me. Well, let me first of all congratulate you. Thank you. Uh, what were you thinking when you went into this film festival? So it was actually um, a really quick turnaround because um, um, Dr. Galvin, who was producing the, the short, um, recommended that I submit to the Guam International Film Festival, which at the time that we started production was pretty much, um, I think, four to five weeks away um, from its like submission due date. Um, so we were really we were, we we didn't really feel rushed, but there was certainly a degree of, you know, we got to we got to do this. Um, and it's like, and, and it's nice to work obviously with a, with a timeline because, you know, you have to commit to it. And, but yeah, we were, we were kind of, we were shocked and surprised and very grateful and honored to have um, won the award. Um, I did not have the pleasure of seeing the other films, but I've heard from, uh, from my friends that have gone and viewed it that those are some very those are some very excellent films from very talented filmmakers so i'm very honored what is this film all about steps on the shore so steps on the shore is a short film about um a young man who has to leave his island for college and he has to prepare a valedictorian speech which kind of forces him to confront these qualms that he's had growing up on the island. Um, and so, you know, typically a valedictorian speech is something about giving thanks and recognition. Um, but this is a protagonist who has kind of grown up with a, a little bit of a resentment, I guess. Um, and the film kind of explores that and explores coming to appreciate um, his home. Is this film at all any way autobiographical? So the film isn't um, entirely autobiographical. Um, but when I was writing this, or I mean, as of right now, my current goal um, with filmmaking is to produce and direct and write films that are centered on the young adult experience and kind of writing stories that show or share kind of how our experiences are, you know, complex and at times um, very conflicting and very troubling. This film isn't exactly autobiographical, um, but a lot of the story's beats and the story's plot points are heavily inspired by my own life and my own perspective, just because I felt that writing that, I didn't have to worry too much about the the, authentic, the authenticity of the perspective and of where I'm um, placing the camera or how a character will be acting, simply because I, I, I f I've felt those experiences before. Well, I, I'm sure some people might be interested in seeing the film. How could they um, access it at this time? Um, so I'm actually going to um, I'm actually starting a campaign um, so that I can hopefully make another film when I come back um, late December of this year. Um, and so as a way to support that campaign, I will be posting the film online for other people to see. And additionally, a film that I've 
directed and produced um, earlier for Wesleyan University um, will be streaming, or will not not be streaming, but will be shown at the university's theater. And after that, I will have the rights to show that as well. So there may be a chance that both films will be released publicly, but maybe in two two weeks from now, um, the film should be available for public viewing for free. How did, how did you come to first be interested in filmmaking? So... I mean, I've always, I, I've kind of grown up really um, watching, watching television and watching um, films. It was kind of my, um, it was my main exposure to storytelling and to, I, I guess, like stories in general. Because personally, I've always felt that um, books and comics were a little too slow for me, and I wanted something a little bit more immediate and um, something that I, I've. I could feel a little more in my middle school and high school. I've played a lot of video games, which are commonly associated with film, at least in the terms of visual arts. And so those kind of um, like the stories that I've, that I'd see in video games and it being a very similar medium, at least um, in terms of like how visual arts translates over from between film and um, video games um, kind of, in, kind of, um, I guess kept that spark going. And around the time that COVID hit, I um, had to seriously consider what I was going to do when I graduated from high school. Um, and I decided, you know, maybe I should try film because it was interesting to me. It was, it was not anything I had practiced or studied before, but I decided maybe it was worth a try. So I made a little, um, mini documentary for um, my school's volleyball team and that was like my first like major or not major but my first like film um and ever since then i was like i, I was pretty set that this was something i wanted to do so you're currently pursuing uh, a film degree there in connecticut can you tell us about it and is it what you expected before you got there so that's actually a great question um Wesleyan University is one of many film schools in the country, um, but it isn't, or at least it's a it's a it's a school that has a film program in it. But it's not what most people would typically associate with film studies or film schools. Um, the big the big film schools like USC, UCLA, and NYU. They, they focus a lot on production and cinematography and all those things. And when I applied to Wesleyan and I, when I was starting in the program, I thought that that was a similar experience to what I would get here. But what I realized is that Wesleyan devotes itself and its energy to studying film from a different perspective. Um, the philosophy that, that Wesleyan has is that, or first of all, Wesleyan is focused very much on studying film first and then making films later versus learning how to make films and then making films, which a lot of, a lot of the major film schools do is they focus on aspects of production and cinematography and lighting and sound design. And then they send you into thesis programs um, and capstone programs where you can make films versus Wesleyan, which focuses very much uh, very heavily on theory and history um, so that you can understand the evolution of the medium um, and how the great thinkers of film in the past thought of film within their technical limitations. Now, of course, the, um, we have technology that allows us to work more flexibly, but it's Wesleyan's philosophy that allows you to, or that focuses on working within the boundaries. Like for example, for our junior project, we'll have to work with 16 millimeter film, which is, um, it's definitely not as easy shooting on film as it is on digital because you have to be more cognizant of what you're shooting. Cause you can't just shoot a lot cause that would cost you more money. So, yeah, um, Wesleyan's film program was not exactly what I thought it was going to be going in, but I am very grateful that I've landed in a in a program that is very cognizant of intentionality. What would you say is the biggest thing you've learned so far in your college career? 
I think, well, one of the things that I was really struggling with, I guess, um, was story. Um, I don't really consider myself to be the most amazing writer in the world. Um, and so I started to take a lot of classes about writing. Um, and I guess the main thing I, I've learned is that like story is really at the heart of the medium. Um, you know, you can watch a lot of short films and feature films and they have all these big explosions and they have all these visual effects, you know, and studios are pouring like millions and millions of dollars into these like th- pretty much these roller coaster rides. Um, but the films that, um, the films that really stick with people when they leave the theater and the films that, um, get recognition from critics and, you know, just even just the regular viewer is that is, is are those that devote themselves to the story and commit to the story and the characters. And so I think that that's the main thing or the, the biggest thing that I've learned. Well, you're still young in your career. Um, do you feel you have a particular point of view um, as a filmmaker at this time? And where are you headed? What is next on the horizon for you? So I think in terms of like perspective as an artist, um, I, I'm trying to experiment a lot, um, with film. Um, I think it's a very flexible medium. And so while narratively I'm trying to work on, um, you know, these shorts that are focused on the young adult experience. I'm also exploring other avenues with documentary. Um, I work with Wesleyan's um, video communications team, um, and they focus a lot on, you know, the real world, you know, the nonfiction, um, showing life on this campus. Um, and I think the, um, sorry about that. Um, one second. Yeah. Um, and I think what's in, what's in like what the future holds, I guess I'm just trying to shoot as much as possible, learn as much as possible. Um, I'm looking into directing as much as I can. Um, and hopefully I can meet a lot of like-minded people and we can get more films going. Uh, um, another thing that I've learned here is that a lot of the film industry is like lateral growth um, and lateral expansion versus like vertically. You meet a lot of people and you expand your bubble this way. You don't necessarily meet a producer up here. You know, you, you, you find people you love working with here and eventually you'll find yourself in more film jobs and um, telling a lot of stories. And so, you know, that's that's what I want to do, I guess. Joshua, thank you so much for your time and your thoughtful answers. Yeah, Any course. final thoughts before we go? I, I just want to say that um, I think that, you know, I think that in Saipan, um, at least from what I've experienced um, and in the Northern Marianas, there's there's a lot of potential for art and there's a lot of potential for storytelling. Um, I had I had a lot of friends back home that um, spent a lot of time and in writing and sometimes in poetry and drawing. And I think that it's really important that, um, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on encouraging that um, in the island, because I think, you know, in, in the Northern Marianas, Mariana islands, we have a very unique perspective, you know, towards the rest of the world. Um, And so I think that art is one way that we can communicate that. And one way we can kind of explore that and come to terms with it in a certain sense. And that's kind of what, steps on the shore was for me was kind of coming to terms with um, my upbringings and my perspective um, and trying to figure that out. So I think my, my, the the thing that I'd want to leave anybody with is, you know, explore that, explore um, art and explore your capabilities um, in order to express yourself. We've been chatting with Joshua Pahari Liaga. He is a young filmmaker and the writer, director, and star of uh, Steps on the Shore, which won Best in the Marianas at the 2022 Guam International Film Festival. We'll be back with more after this break. In Northern Marianas Humanities Council, Bula Guinahanya Puri Historian Marianas Zan Kutura. Sinyon Soda SCCNN Food Mashon Gis on Mommy website nmhcouncil.org. Pat Besita Gi YouTube, Pat Facebook. Guahalokwe Diferentes Class in Leblune Sinya on Fon. 
ni Northern Marianas Humanities Council has Uzura Todui Experiencia and Tautau. And welcome back to your Humanities Half Hour. In this half of the show, we're chatting with Saipan born and raised filmmaker Tony Young. Tony has a bachelor in cinema and he recently produced and premiered the short film A Quarter of Silence at several film festivals throughout the U.S. Actually, Tony, you wrote and directed it. Is that correct? And welcome. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. It's it's such a privilege to be here. So thank you so much for having me. Maybe you can start us off with telling us what this film is about. Absolutely. Um, so A Quarter of Silence is, is a film I wrote and directed for my undergrad um, thesis film. And um, the film follows two young parents that lose their drive for affection and goes through this one night of silence that basically reignites their so-called proclivity for love. Um, I wanted to capture what I think are the three must-haves of a relationship, um, which is communicating, understanding, and forgiving that define the meaning of love. Um, and therefore, um, we did this film in 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 about gosh six months six months of pre-production production and post-production and um now we entered it into the festivals and it's making its festival run yeah how's that going uh it's premiered several at several festivals already correct it has yes most recently actually after the marianas variety article as well as the saipan tribune article um we did get nominated as um Best Drama for Cons Shorts. Um, so that was awesome. And we just won last week at Mentone Festival for Best Romance. So that was that was amazing. Well, congratulations. Um, how did you get interested in filmmaking? Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I, I think it started with my mom's flip phone when I was really? about... Yeah, when I was about nine or ten years old. See, my mother had the newest LG flip phone with a camera, and and uh, that specific model was able to pause and unpause the video while filming. So I remember I used to stabilize it on a rock or some sort of platform, have a friend stand right in front of it. I'd hit record, and the friend would make a little cool hand gesture, and then I'd pause the video and have him move, let's say, three three steps to the right, unpause the video, have him make another cool hand gesture. And then when you edit it in post and and play it back, it seemed like he teleported from one side to the other. And I would go to school and show it to all my friends and then get a laugh out of it. And I found that really, really entertaining and realized I loved creating content and showing it to people. And so it just started from there and trying to make films every chance I get. So you went on to get your uh, Bachelor of Cinema from San Francisco State University. Has filmmaking turned out to be what you anticipated when you first, you know, planted the seed using your mom's flip phone? Is it is it what you expected? It's it's definitely a lot more than what I expected. Really? Um, Absolutely. There's there's just so much more details that goes into filmmaking. And um, so as of now, I work um, on shoots whenever I can. I'd work on documentaries, TV shows, um, commercials, corporate shoots, and even still student films. And my position <clears throat> varies depending on what shoot I'm on. It'll range from being the assistant director to the assistant camera or the producer or the production coordinator, as well as even a production assistant, depending on what shoots I'm on. On, and that's been that's been great. Um, I do feel that film school is more of a sort of high school, sort of a prep school for the industry. Um, it definitely prepares you for what comes afterwards. However, it only gives you the fundamentals of what it takes to be a filmmaker. And so I'd say a lot of the hands on stuff you'd learn afterwards. Mm. Having a chance to um to be a part of all these different um, positions and jobs on on as part of the production. What do you feel you're leaning towards? Like some people love to write, some people hate to write. Like what's your favorite part? Uh, my favorite part is definitely pre-production to, uh, to production. Um, so writing, directing, um, and uh, I, I definitely have love for producing as well. 
And so I've been trying to do that a lot. I actually, uh, a couple friends and I just applied to this residency program with Netflix and I applied under the producing program. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, did I understand correctly that your film, A Quarter of Silence, is also going to be on the Roku channel? Absolutely. It, uh, it was streaming on the Roku channel. I'm pretty sure it's still up there. Um, it is, yes. Okay, okay, okay. What would you say is the biggest thing you've learned um, since you've graduated about filmmaking that you're – taking with you as you progress through this career? I think, well, I think for an industry like this, where a degree doesn't necessarily guarantee you a job, it is uh, extremely important to understand just how much you enjoy it. Um, I think many young filmmakers have a misconception of filmmaking going into film school. I've definitely had conversations with film students in the past, and it seemed like they were really adamant about just wanting to be a director or a writer. And now keep in mind, I, I don't mean that you shouldn't just want to do one thing. However, I um, I strongly don't think that there are many people who gets paid to direct and write films straight out of film school. And therefore, being well-rounded is a better option, knowing how to work a camera, learning how to edit and sound design, etc. Because at least for me, I, I had to start in, in positions such as uh, production assistants, and I still do it from time to time. But however, being well-rounded with the knowledge of how a set works in and out would definitely help you move up quickly. Mm -hmm. You you may have heard that um, there's been some discussion here in the Marianas about starting a film industry. Um, what do you think is the potential being from here um, for an industry like that? Absolutely. Um, I did read about the post and I was just extremely excited i know that it's with um film producer brad Cravoy, and um i've seen his work and i'm definitely a fan and so for for him being able to partner up with nmc to create this new program for film students it's it's just amazing i think a lot of us who grew up on the island our mindsets are very innocent and pure and therefore our creativity is is very easily distinguished with with many of the filmmakers that perhaps grew up elsewhere. And therefore, having a program like this, giving students a chance at, at um, being able to become a filmmaker on the island is definitely something I'm all for. Um, I wish I had that growing up on the island when I was going to school. Um, however, you know, better late than ever. Um, I'm glad it's there now. And um <sighs> If anybody is listening from NMC right now, please reach out. If you, if there's anything you think I'd be able to bring to the table, I'd be more than happy to be a part of this exciting journey. You know, you mentioned before we started the interview about how um, with the story that came out about your filmmaking in the local newspaper, you're suddenly like hearing from teachers you had in elementary school and um, how does it feel to know that, you know, you, you've been gone, obviously, you you know, you're moving on on your career, but to know that um, people here still have, uh, seems like uh, for you and many others who leave like a, a sense of personal attachment uh, to what you're doing. Right. Absolutely. It's it's amazing. It's like it's almost like time traveling um, with teachers and even friends that we haven't spoken to in years. Friends, friends that are on different parts of the world now um, um, talking to me and and, um, and um, watching watching the films that I came out with within the past couple of years. It's it's such a joy and um it definitely helps my parents my parents has a lot of friends on the island and they've been sending it all over the place and um they're having a blast and they're very very supportive and so it's it's just been awesome um i've had many mentors on the island growing up and so for my mentors my high school teachers my my friends and family to to see this um it 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 really makes me um happy that that um i didn't disappoint anyone <laughs> I'm still trying and, uh -huh. um, but yes well, uh could you share with us a little bit about some of your other films that you've uh been a part of or or directed or written 
Absolutely. Um, so I did make another film in a course um, that my mentor taught in San Francisco State University, um, Scott Boswell. And the course is called Fiction Filmmaking, where you are supposed to make a film every single week. Um, and you play a different position. So this week you are the assistant director. Next week you are the sound mixer. And when it came to my time to direct my film, I made a little film called Fake It. And um, Fake It is is very, very different from A Quarter of Silence. It's this psychological thriller um, that that does not have any dialogue and strictly action and the whole thing happens sort of in this bathroom and um it's this idea i got from a really really old chinese film um so when i put two and two together everybody um everybody had a blast people were it was on edge and um it was really really cool as as sort of the first little short film um that i made that i was able to screen with um with all my friends and peers from from the university and with with the other films that I've worked on um, for jobs, I recently did a documentary with HBO Max with um, American journalist Ronan Farrow, um, and it follows it follows all the celebrity cases throughout the early to late two thousands, whether it's Michael Jackson or even Bill Clinton, and that was absolutely amazing. The producers for that documentary was also the writers for the new film um, In the Eyes of Tammy Faye. And so it was a great opportunity to meet new people. And then uh, a lot of commercials, a lot of commercials happen in San Francisco. So I've done commercials for Instacart, for Google and for Samsung. And then I'm still very much engaged with friends at school and student films. So whenever they want to bring me on for a project, I'm always there. And you know, because it's friends, they make you do whatever they feel like. Um, <laughs> you do. Whatever so, they so, need you for. Absolutely. So sometimes I'm not behind the camera. Sometimes I'm in front of it. Sometimes they make me act. And it's been great. It's been super fun. What would you say your perspective is at this time in your life and career as a filmmaker? Is there any particular perspective you have? Um, You know, I, I still very much enjoy um how do you say watching um watching popcorn movies um i i once in a while i was put on a movie just because i could watch it without thinking about it and just sit back and relax also i'm a huge superhero movie fan so marvel dc films are always a much must watch for me and they aren't necessarily categorized as fine cinema so i'd say i'm pretty good at turning it on and off i i criticize films depending on what category it falls under in my dictionary rather than looking at it from a filmmaker's perspective every time and Mm. i think that helps a lot to enjoy it as a fan and also as a fellow filmmaker. So what's coming up in your life? Uh, Any long-term goals set yet? Absolutely. Well, I, uh, I think like any filmmaker, I'd love to share my creativity around the world for people to enjoy. And therefore, perhaps a feature film with a well-known studio or a partnership with a filmmaker I looked up to um, would be the long-term goal in the industry. Tony, I really want to thank you for your time. Any final thoughts before we go? Thank you so much, Catherine. Um, Absolutely. This has been amazing. I definitely want to thank a couple of my mentors from the island. Um, Jessica and Walter Mendez, they are basically my parents growing up. I love them to death. And um, they've always been there for me and they're still here for me all the time. And without them, I will definitely not be here today. Um, They were both uh, teachers at GES. And so I just wanted to say thank you, as well as my high school teachers, Mr. and Mrs. Mira, and um, my college professor and mentor, Scott Boswell. Thank you so much for everything. I couldn't have done this without you guys. And more to come. And more to come. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, Well, I guess I should say congratulations, because as you uh, revealed in this uh, chat today, uh, your latest film, uh, A Quarter of Silence, is award winning. Uh, So congratulations on that. uh, And you as writer and director of that. And we wish you all the best in your future career. Thank you so much. 
Our guest today has been Tony Young. He is a Saipan born and raised filmmaker, and his latest film is A Quarter of Silence. This has been your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. Your Humanities Half Hour is a production of the Northern Marianas Humanities Council, funded in part by the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council.